Okay, so good morning again. I'm repeating for uh, for the recording now. Um, so a, a few information before starting with today's lecture. The goal for today is to do the last exercise of the course on the last topic of the course, that is the chi-square test. So we are going to do an exercise that may also be an exercise of an exam. So this is something that could happen in a, in an ex, in a written exam. Uh, before starting with this exercise that we, we will use all the time today for doing this exercise uh, with you together, uh, a few information on how to structure these uh, online classes for this course, uh, for this last week of the course. So first of all, uh, we are here using Zoom. So if you have any question at any time, you can write in the chat. I have the chat open here in my computer. So you can use the, the chat that is on Zoom to write, to make question or to answer to the question that I can, uh, I can ask. If you want, you can also turn on the microphone and speak uh, freely. That's not the problem. Uh, that's for today. On Thursday, we will have a change in the usual schedule. So instead of having one hour in the class, 8.30 a.m. and two slots of the labs, as you have seen on Slack, we are going to have one hour and a half of lab on Zoom, on this same Zoom link, everybody, every groups here. Uh, and after that, the exam simulation that we are preparing. So how it works both ways. So at 10 a.m. we will join this Zoom call for the lab. And I will split you in uh, breakout rooms so that each group will be in a breakout, breakout room. And uh, both Hai and, the, uh, and Diego will move each between each breakout room to see if any group has any question, any last time um, observation or request for or comments for their prototype. Then at 11.30, we will stop the, the lab, I will deactivate the breakout room and I will give you the text of the exam, the, the simulation of the exam. That is a realistic text, obviously is not the same that you will, will have in, um, for, for the first seat of the exam, but it's something similar at least, or in topic. And I will give you the test, the text that is that will be online on the website. And I will give you, let's say, half an hour to start thinking and trying to do something in, uh, in the test. So it will be a short simulation in that way in perspective uh, for, for time. So in that half an hour, if you have any question and clarification about the text of the exam, you can clearly ask always here on Zoom. After that half an hour, I will show you and we'll comment together a solution, a possible solution for that exam. And then after discussing and answering any question related to that solution, we will wrap up the course uh, and we will conclude, even if it's not uh, 1 p.m., even if it's before 1 p.m. So we have maximum of three hours on Thursday, maybe a little bit less. But for sure, the first hour and the half will be the lab, and the second hour and the half part, a good part of the second hour and the half will be the exam simulation. And that will wrap up the entire course. A last reminder, and then I will, I will start with the exercise, is to fill up the uh, questionnaire for the quality of teaching that is both related to this course and in general to this semester for what's concerned other courses for Polytechnical. So please, we are clearly more interested in the, in the part that is related to this course. So if you didn't fill up the CPD questionnaire, please do it at, at your earliest convenience. Okay, any question so far or related to other uh, lectures in the, in the past year? Yes, no. 
we can also use some emoji here if you want. No question? Okay, so. No, that's not right. One second. Um. No. Okay. Okay, I don't find the Where is? Ah, here. Okay. So now do you see the, the slides? Thanks. Okay, so. Chi square test. So, do you remember more or less the chi square test? I hope so. So, the idea we will also do a brief reminder if needed. The idea is for um, one second, I lost the chat. Okay. The idea is for, um, as, we, as we said, is to compare things, for instance, using the k-square test. So we would like to do this kind of comparison that is a fake comparison, but is in line with uh, control experiment and A-B testing. So we will have two version of the uh, Portale da Didattica. Uh, one that is the let's say the, the normal the 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 page that you see here with news material forum students and elaborates and the other one will be the same but instead of forum you have community so same page same click but just a label that is changed and we would like to know if the community link, that one here, will lead to more students using the functionality. So clicking, let's say on this link versus the original forum label. So as for control experiment, we just change one variable in this case, one thing that is the label. And we are going to measure one specific thing. So this is the, the more students using the functionality. We need to measure that in some way. And we are going to do, as an experimental design, an online A-B testing, where this is version, let's say, A, and this is the version B. And how we are going to do this? We are going to put this online to all students at Polytechnico, so in theory, let's say, and we will randomly show each student one version of the page. So let's say I'm reading here some names of you. Let's say Alessandro is uh, logging in on the portal and we'll see the community. Then Dario will log in and we'll see community version. Then Francesco will see instead randomly the forum version, etc. So every student that log in, as soon as they log in, will get one of two pages randomly, either the community and either the forum. And we are interested here in the engagement rate. So how many students open that functionality? Remember in A-B testing, we need to have something to measure very, very precisely. So we need to 
measure these more students, that is the engagement rate. So how many students open that functionality? So what does it mean to you? How many students open that functionality? What are we going to measure? The clicks, yes. The link clicks on the item. So we are going to measure how many clicks this receive and how many clicks this receives. That is, this is the why the way in which we can measure the engagement, measure how many students open the functionality. Open the functionality in a web page is clicking on the button, clicking the link. So yes, we are going, we can do this and we are going to do this. So we collect the data. So we did this experiment with all stu polytechnical students. Well, not all, for a certain amount of time. And we did this experiment with 220 students. You see 100 here and 120 here is 220 students in total. And we are going to measure that, the clicks on the link on community versus forum. That is again randomly assigned, so we don't have a perfectly balanced uh, set of population. Here we have 100, here we have 120, so it's not perfectly balanced. It's similar, it's not 103, but it's 100 and 120. It's not it's not not the same number, and it's fine because we randomly assign, and it's quite large numbers here, 100 and 120. Uh, so we, we run this experiment, we had Google Analytics and we collected the number of clicks on that link, for instance, or the opening on that specific page that the only way to open that page is by clicking that link. So it's, it's the same. And we got these results. We got that 30 students on logged in uh, and going on the page of the course, clicked on the community link versus 20, while the other 70 and 100 in the, these two groups don't. So we have 30 people here, 20 people here. And if even if we compute that in percentage, we see that this is a 30% of the population and this is 17% of this population. So our question, our original question where Will the community link lead to significantly more students using the functionality versus the original form link? So if we look at this number, we can say we have done, right? Because community is 30%, forum is 17%. We can clearly rephrase that button, that label, uh, so that is, uh, community and not forum because it will produce a bigger engagement, right? So uh, are we done or not so fast? What do you think? That's easy as a question, right? Are we done or not? We can say that Community is better than forum and leave the lecture. No. Who we'll say something different or agree with Stefano? Okay, so we have another that agree with Stefan that say no, the results might be inconclusive. It's it's all right. No, this is that might happen by chance. Maybe because we had too few visitors, so Polytechnico could have I don't know twenty thousand students probably, and so this is very few people. If the entire population of students is. 20,000 people, right? This is just 200, so very, very few. 
And if we, well, we are focused on students. Um, so yeah, that number could have happened by chance. So we don't know if, if we pick another 100 students and another 120 students, we will get the same results. So results may be inconclusive, but because we, we don't know if this happened just by chance, maybe for the population, maybe because we had few people with respect to, to the total population of students that Polytechnic has. So we need to check more carefully before saying yes, community is better than, um, than forum. So let's use the chi-square test to understand whether this significant, this different significance. So as remember, chi-square tests have very few or no assumption, basically, but tell you just whether a difference is significant or not, not how big this difference is, if there is or not a difference. So we are interested if there is not a difference, we have a bigger number on community, so we can tend to say yes, that community is bigger because we have bigger number there. If k square test confirm this. So if k square test confirm this, we can then say to the developer of Polytechnical, yes, please go ahead and replace forum with community because just that simple change will produce more, uh, more engagement in that page. So again, clearly this is not something that we did for real. This is all fictional, but it serves as an, as an example. So as we said, we need to write a null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, which could be, and I'm asking to you, which could be the null hypothesis and or the alternative hypothesis that we are going to write here. And so let's start from the null hypothesis, which is the null hypothesis that we can write here. So Michele said the null hypothesis could be the change in the label, so the community label does not differ, differ from the original one forum in terms of engagement. Any other options? Do you think that is fine? Yes, no. No opinion. And the alternative hypothesis then what will be? Okay, uh, alternative hypothesis, using community as a label produce an increase in engagement towards that section or having community instead of forum gives higher engagement rate. And uh, Michele said the opposite one, there is a significantly change. So the change in the label, significant different from the original one in terms of engagement rate. Well, this last, uh, Michele, it's, 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 it could be better phrased the null hypothesis could be fine, but the alternative hypothesis could also say which one it's 
it's better, let's say, where you bet, do you bet on the community or do you bet on the forum? So the change of label significantly, not just defer, defer but um, improve. So something that say, okay, community should be, I'm expecting the community is better than the other one. But yes, more or less they're right. So we can write these two hypotheses. And if we are going to do, for instance, at the exam, an exercise with k square test, this is something that you need to do. You will have probably a table like this one with the collected data. And the first thing that you need to do is to write a null hypothesis and to write an alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis could be, uh, like Michele said, something like this. The community link will lead to no significant change in the number of students using the functionality versus the original forum link. The alternative hypothesis, as many of you said, the community link will lead to significantly more students using the functionalities versus the original forum link. So remember, the null hypothesis say that there is no change, no difference, while the alternative hypothesis highlight where do you think that this change will be, on community or on forum, in this case, on A or on or B. So, and we are going in case square test to disprove the null hypothesis. So we are writing the alternative hypothesis just to remember which is our goal, but we are going to work with the null hypothesis. So we want to negate, to disprove the null hypothesis. Okay. So first of all, as we did for the coins in, in December, we need to create another table do you remember, like this, uh, in which we have to write what we expect to, a, to have if the null hypothesis is actually true. Hmm? So for the coins, if you remember, we toss the coin and remember 10 times and we get head for seven and tail for three. And we knew that the, the null hypothesis was true in the coin example, if the head will appear five times and the tail will appear five times, because that was what we expected, 50% of the time head and 50% of the time tail. And we needed those one, those two tables, the real, let's say the calculated uh, values and the expected value to perform our calculation to see if there is a difference or not, or all of this happened by chance. So we need to create the table here as well. So here we don't have uh, knowledge about the students and we have more than one. And so for the coin, if you remember, we just have a tail and head and we had numbers like seven and three, so just one row plus the heading. And this was the, um, the, the calculated value. And then we have the expected value in the case of coins that were tail and head five and five. So this table here is this one, is the equivalent of this one, the calculated value. We need to have also this table here, the expected value. So which is, the expected value of this. So to compute the expected value of this, we need to not just have this table like we had before, but we need also to add all these totals. We need the totals on the column like we did before. We need to add the grand total and we, do, we need to have the totals on the rows. So you see here we have 50 students out of 220 that used the functionality, no matter if through community or forum, but just use the functionality. And here we have 170 over all the 220 students that didn't use the functionality. So we need also to have this total. So what we need to do, 
we need to create clearly another table where each column will have this formula in it. So row total multiplied for column total by the grand total. So we, we are trying to have a fair distributions of students in the four spot. And we need to do this because here we have 100 and here we have 120. So we have different numbers, different amount of students involving, involved here. So clearly the numbers cannot be the same. We cannot write 30 and 30, 30 for each. We cannot write like this, like we did for the tail and the, and the head. We cannot do this because here the total should be 50, here the total should be 170, and here in this column, the total should be 120, and here the total should be 100. So we cannot write 30 and 30. We need to write the actual number that will give with respect both the totals in the row and the totals in the column within the grand total of 220. So if you apply this formula here, this formula here, so you do you write here uh, row total, so 50 multiplied uh, call total 100, divide the grand total 220 and then here we do the same what is here uh, row total 50 multiplied column total in this case is 120 because we are in another column divided always 220 etc and we can continue here we need to continue here we need to fill this table with the expected values, not just the collected. We have the distribution of students in the case in which there is no difference between community and forum. So if you try to do this calculation, you will obtain these results. You will obtain that 22.7 students will have to click on community, 27, the three students will have to click on forum and 77.3 didn't, that add the community page didn't click on community and 92.7 that add the forum page didn't click on the forum link. So if you perform the sum clearly, this, the sum between these two, is 100 and the sum between these two is 50 and same here. So we add a, let's say, fair distribution of students in the expected case. So we can write a, a table, clean table like this without the, the calculation. So now we are again in the same case of the, um, of the coin which we had the expected value and the actual value that we collected that are in the upper table. And notice here that we can have a strange things because if you actually do this experiment with a fair population, you won't have 22.7 students, what is a 0 0.7 student clicking on community or a 0 0.3 students, it's just one third of a student, the other two third of a student click on community and one third of a student click on forum. So this is something that you cannot have in, if you collect data clearly, but it's fine because it's the expected starting from our experiment, our population whose number produce that artifact. So if you see here in the expected table, dot seven, dot three is fine. 
you can use this. Clearly, if you see 30.5 here in the collected data that something is wrong in your data collection because you cannot have half a student clicking on the link. Either a student entirely click on the link or not. So here will not be acceptable clearly. So here will not be acceptable, but here it's fine because it's the expected values given the numbers that we have. Okay, so everything clear up to now? Please do something to say yes or no. Okay, perfect. You should also have some emoji somewhere in the participant list, but I don't find it anymore. Anyway, um, it's fine. So we have in the status of um, collected data and expected. So we have all the information that we needed. We had measured something very specifically in a precise way because it's clicking. It's not, we don't know. We just measured clicking as expected for an A-B testing and we had numbers. So now we can compute the chi-square. So if you remember the formula, the formula say that there is a sum of the observed value, observed value here, 30, minus the expected values. See, the observed values minus the expected values squared. It's chi-square process, so there is a square somewhere, divided by the expected value. So here it should be a 30 minus 22.7 squared divided by 22.7 plus uh, 20 minus 27.3 squared divided by 27.3 plus 70 minus 77.3 squared divided by 77.3, etc. So we just have four cases here. So we need to have for a, su a summatory of four element. Mm -hmm. uh, observed min minus expected square uh, divided by expected value for each of the four cases and sum together the results. Mm -hmm. so notice here that we also, mm -hmm. as a reminder, if you need to remember where is the square in the name of where is the square in the formula, the square in the formula is in this case, and it's not by chance, is in this case where the numbers could be negative. Because the formula say the observed values minus the expected values. So 20 minus 27.3 will give you a negative value. So if you perform a square, you get the positive value. And so you, all, you always perform some additions between the values. So if you need a reminder where the squared is, it's in the numerator and the numerator, it's in all the formula, just think about where the numbers will go negative. Because here, there is only one point where the number will go negative, where the, there is where the subtraction is, and given that the absurd value could be lower than the expected value is there that you need to elevate it to the power of two. So this is just a, a trick to remember where the square is. So if you do all the calcul calcul com computation here, you should have, and I invite you to do, just to see if the numbers come, it's the same, um, and we'll give you maybe a couple of minutes. If you do this, Computation, 30 minus 22 to seven square divided 22 to seven. So expected, expected here, the expected, the expected. So observed when expected by expected, etc. You should have more or less these numbers that will lead to 5.55 or 5.56. So clear, this is cut after two decimal numbers. It's fine. 
And I rounded, I don't remember if I rounded by excess or, or not, but it should be something around 5.55. If it's anybody doing this, can you please confirm? Is it correct? Do you have the same number, more or less? Okay, so yes, five dot. I, I've seen your question, Gavin. I, I will go back in a minute just to conclude with this slide. Yes, 5.56, it's everything is fine. There's not a big difference on this decimal for this kind of operation. Um, so before continuing, let me answer to one question made before. Could you explain again the aim of a chi-square test? So in this case, we're going to use the chi square test as a way to see if there is a difference, a significant difference, a real, let's say, difference between values in a comparison between two cases. So we have, in this case, the interface number one and the interface number two. And we have numbers that tell us for instance, here, that interface number one is produce more engagement, that is what we are were interested in, than interface number two. And these are numbers. 30 is bigger than 20. Even if we count for 100 and 120, so if we go from this number to percentage, we have 30 and we have 17% on the other side. So it seems, looking at this table, that community will be uh, more, create more engagement than the forum link. So we, we, add, we add a control experiment and we change that label to see if there is a difference and we bet on the community label to be better than the forum uh, label for what concern the number of clicks, so the engagement of the students and the community. So we set up this experiment and we now would like to know if there is, if this difference is this 30 is actually bigger than this 20 or not. And if these, these numbers here happened by chance or not. So if this happened by chance, what does it mean? What does it mean that if we get other 220 people, we can have totally different numbers if this is happened by chance. So this time we get 30 and 20, but next time with other 220 students, we can get five and 100. So totally different numbers. But we would like to make a decision to keep community or to keep forum not by chance, but with some reasonable expectation, with some reasoning, stable reasoning. So we cannot just look at this number and say, okay, this is enough. Let's put community everywhere because it's better. We cannot say this for sure. So we are going to use chi-square test to verify whether this difference happened 
by chance or not. Meaning that if we use k-square test on these numbers and the test will tell us that the difference is real, is significant, is good enough, then we have a very few, a very little chance that these numbers happen by chance. So that means that if we redo the test with other 220 students or we had 300 students, we more or less get always the same percentage. So 30%, around 30% for community and around 17, 20% for forum. So if the K-square test will tell us if this difference is more or less the same if we repeat the experiment. So this is the, the aim. It doesn't tell us if this difference will be always the same. If we always have 30% and 17, or if we are going to have 35% and 20, or, or 35 and 15. But to tell us that there is a difference. This different we're observing is at a certain level robust enough, good enough to make a decision in one direction or another. Does this answer to your question, Gabi? While he is maybe typing, uh, I'm going to answer another question. Um, can, and we can come back if it's not clear. Uh, can we use a calculator at the exam? Yes, you can. A, a physical calculator, not the one on the phone, on a phone, but uh, you can. If you have this kind of exercise, it can be useful for sure. Any other question or Gabin, any other respondus? What is a respondus? No, your calculator, your physical calculator that you have to put on the desk because exams are still in presence up to now. Today, until today, until now they are in presence. Maybe in one hour they will not, but for now they're in presence. So yeah, a physical calculator on the, on the desk. And you, since we are speaking about the exam, you will also need paper, piece of papers and pen for writing, especially the paper to bring with you papers to, to write because you, you need to write the test and give us uh, the paper that you brought. Mm -hmm. So the piece of the, the sheet of papers that you brought to bring with you proper piece of paper to, to do the exam. Okay, um, anyway, Gabin or anybody else, if you have any other question, just write them in the chat. But I think we can proceed uh, for, for now from here. Mm -hmm. So we had that this number that you say it's 5.56. Okay, this is a five, clearly. Uh, it's fine, it's the same in this case. Uh, do you remember what we need to do now? So this is the value of a k-square. K-square is 5.56. What do we need, what we are going to do now with this number, do you remember?
Yes, no, no idea. We compare with the p value on the table, but we need the D. Yes, yes, local distribution level confidence. Yes, a little bit later. First of all, like Michele was saying, we need the DF, the, the, the degree of freedom. DF stands for degree of freedom. That in this case, uh, if you remember, we are going to, to use the formula for the test of independence, not for not the other formula, but for the test of independence, because we don't want to check if this is a normal let's say part of the families of students, but we want to see if there is independent or not. So we are going to apply this formula. How many rows we have in this column, in this table? Two, without the addings, two, one and two. And how many columns, the same. So we are going to use the formula two minus one multiplied two minus one that incredibly gives one. So often, you, you, need to, you need to write the formula. Uh, you need to, uh, to know what happens, why it's one, uh, either with the formula or with the other reasoning that we, we had last time during the last lecture of the year of 2021. But the degree of freedom is often one. It's almost always in A-B testing one. Because typically in A-B testing, you have two condition a and b and people using and not using that stuff in the condition so you typically have uh, two rows and two columns uh, do you remember how we can verify that this number one is the correct one just by looking at the table And then we will look at the distribution, the level of confidence, and compare the p value on the table for sure. But if we look at the table, why, if you remember that the trick that we used last time to better explain what is this degree of freedom, uh, why it's one and not two? That the formula told us that is one, it's fine. But can we empirically? Uh, Get, I have the same results of one. Do you remember what is the degree of freedom? Even uh, no, I don't remember. It's fine for for now. So how can, how can we say here? Look at this table that the degree of freedom is one. No, not the fact that we are, we are not, what do you mean what we are evaluating just one feature? We are just evaluating two version of the same feature. So yes, we have one variable, but in two condition, the community and forum. So if we look, we, we know that by the formula, the degree of freedom, is one because the formula gives us this number and it's correct it's one but last time that is before christmas clearly uh, we also said if you look at the table and we do this for the coins if you look at the table before using the formula just because maybe you don't remember the formula you want to check if you are using the right formula to get the right results if you look at the table and also to give a definition of degree of freedom. If you look at the table, 
why in this case the degree of freedom is one and not two or three or zero zero is is not possible but so the degree of freedom if you remember in the table is the numbers of cells that can freely change without affecting other cells without constraints they are free to change yes manuel because we have two values and the others can value it just by the total minus the other more or less i i i think to have understood what you mean uh, so again the degree of freedom is the number of values that we can freely degree of freedom freely change without any constraint. So it's one, we know that it's one, but why it's one? Because if we change one of these and we put here, I don't know, 40, how many other cells? So if we put here 40, what happens to the other three cells? They stay like they are, they need to be changed as well. Option one or option two. They stay as is or they need to be changed. They change, clearly they change. Yes, we, we keep the total. We cannot move the total, right? We, we had 220 people and we, we, these are constraints that we have. The totals are constrained. So if we change one of these, the other should change, as Luca said, to balance the others. So they change value. So yes, we have one cell here, for sure one cell that is free to change because if we change these, all the others need to change. These are not free to change. One, these three cells are not free to change if we change these because they are constrained by the totals. If we change, if we change these, same happens. If this is 30, Clearly, this change, this change, and this change. Again, these three cells are not free to change. And we can do this game with the other two cells that are missing. But we can change just one number freely at a time. We cannot change independently these two. We cannot because 40 plus 30 is not 50 and 40 plus 70 is not 100. So we need to, as Lucas said, balance with the total. The totals are the constraint that we have. We had to run an experiment with 220 students and 100 of them use community and 120 use forum and 50 use the functionality and 170 didn't use the functionality. These are the numbers that we have from our experiment. If we change the number of click, we can just change one cell freely. The other chain, if we change one cell, the other are constrained. So the degree of freedom is one, independently from the formula. Yes, because the formula said that, but it's fine, it's correct. But is one because we can change just one cell freely at a time. In the moment in which we change one cell, all the other cells are changing. So this is the meaning, the empirical, let's say, meaning of degree of freedom. It's the freedom of change of one number here on one cell in this table. And often again, it's one because we can always in A-B testing with use and didn't use or click, didn't click, etc. We can just typically send, modify one cell at a time 
freely and all the others are constrained by the totals in these cases of A-B testing. Okay, this is one way empirical to verify if the degree of freedom is correct. How many cells in the tables can freely change independently from the others? One, because we can change one cell and then all the others needs to be balanced in the results. Is it clear, this one? You also have this in the, in the slides of the lecture and in the video of the lecture, the last lecture of December, if you need to, to receive this, but it's the same. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, some, some, someone found the, the, the emoji in the participants uh, who is Sophia. Um, okay, so we have now the two piece of information that we need. We need 5.56, that is the chi-square, and we need the degree of freedom, that is one. So now we can do uh, what basically the three of us wrote in the, in the chat, that is understand the level of, uh, get, look for the level of confidence, the p-value related to the chi-square results and our degree of freedom, that is one. So we have a table, this is a standard table for chi-square that you can pick it on the internet. Uh, this is just one, it's all, all the same. They are typically, they are very, very big tables with multiple, so this table continues clearly here and it has also here something in the middle. So it's a very big table. I just cut and paste the portion that we need in the slides. So if we are going to do if or when we're going to do an exercise like this in the exam, we are going to provide you an equivalent of this table clearly for completing the, um, the, the, the exercise. So you don't have to remember by memory the table. We are going to provide you with the table. So we need to look degree of freedom one. So first line, almost always I said first line, the where is the p value of the results? So 5.56. So 5.56, uh, if you look in this table, 5.55 or 5.6, it's more or less the same. It will be here, in this here, because it's bigger than 3.8, and it's clearly lower. Uh, sorry, not here. Um, the other cell, uh, here, because it's clearly bigger than 3.8. It's five, it's bigger than three. It's smaller than 6.6, 6 because this is five. So it's clearly smaller than this. So it's close to this one. It's not exactly 0 0.025, but it's similar because it's probably closer to 5.0 than to 6.6, 5.5 or 5.56. So in the case, it's closer to that one. So it will probably be 0 0.0, I don't know, 2, 4, something like this. So we can say that is more or less here. It's closer, it's very close to this one. So we can say that is more or less 0 0.025, because again, it's very close. It's quite close to this. Uh, we can also say that uh, P, the P value, the probability value is included between uh, 0 0.025 and 0 0.01, because actually is in the middle but given that it's closer to 0 0.025, we can approximate and say it's more or less 0 0.025. But both formulations are fine. 
either this or this. Typically, we prefer this when we have maybe it's six. So it's something more in the middle between the two values. So but both are fine. So we got this number, the p value that is 0 0.025. And we got this number thanks to all the work that we did up to now. So what we are going to do with this number? We need to decide, and these are the same slides that we had uh, in the last lecture. We need to decide whether to sustain or reject the null hypothesis. And we have said that we usually reject the null hypothesis when the probability is, why not 0 0.05? because 0 0.05 is three dot eight, we have five dot five. So it's, it's in this range in the first line, yes. Uh, coin is a typo, where is coin? Yes, coin is a typo, is just forget this row. Yes, this is the same table of the of the previous set of slides. So I, I just copy and paste these slides and change um, the values like here, like 5.5 .5, and I forgot this line. So yes, it's a typo. So this is the result. First row, it's always first row because the degree of freedom is one. So it's first row and the value is here. We need to read the header here. Uh, so again, probability p value is around 0 0.025. And we need to decide whether to reject or sustain the null hypothesis. And we reject the null hypothesis when the p value is either smaller than 0 0.05 or if you want to be more conservative, uh, a p-value minor the 0 0.01. So if we pick 0 0.05, so we are accepting a p-value that stay from here onwards in the table. So if we have 3.9, it's in the right size of the table. If we pick instead, 0 0.01, we are accepting only numbers from year onwards. So traditionally, um, is acceptable to use p minor the 0 0.05. So we are going to stick with that. If we want to be more, uh, let's say, uh, more strict, you can also use p minor. Min minor d of 0 0.01. But if we use, let's say, the normal, let's say the standard way of proceeding with p uh, minor of 0, 0 0.5, we can reject the null hypothesis. And what does it mean p minor of 0 0.05 or 0 0.01? Means that we are confident that in one case with 0 0.05, 95% of the time, the test results correctly apply. So if we redo the same test, we are confident that, at, that let's say at least 95% of the time, the test will give the same similar results in which um, a community is better is create more engagement than the uh, forum version. If we got the other version of P minus 0 0.01, we are just leveraging the, the, this handle from 95% to 99%. So we are almost sure that every time that we do this test, we have the same similar results. Our results with similar trend, not the similar, not the identical number, but in which community is create more engagement, some more engagement than the other. 
So you, you understand why typically uh, P minor 0, 0 0.5 is acceptable because 95% of the time is clearly uh, quite confident for changing a label in a user interface, not for uh, curing uh, cancer, let's say. Um, even if it could probably be a very good number, also in that case. So if we choose uh, this number, that is again the standard number that is historically used, we can reject the null hypothesis. So we can, given that we can reject the null hypothesis, we can say we can accept the alternative hypothesis. And so we can say that the imaginary community page, community link leads to more students using the functionality than the forum because it, we are going to accept the alternative hypothesis. So we can go to Polytechnic staff and say, please change the label, put community because that will immediately create a benefit, maybe not immediately, but will create a benefit in the engagement for that functionality in the user interface. Some kind, we don't know how big this change will be, how many students, how big will be the more the engagement, but it will be more than the forum version. Maybe not a lot, maybe incredibly more. We don't know. The k square test doesn't give us these numbers, but we can reasonably say that it will be create more engagement. Uh, I'm going to answer to Jacopo question, and then I will have a, one last question for you. Uh, Jacopo say, could you please repeat the definition of null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is in a way the, alter the, the opposite. Let me get this by example. Is in a way the plain hypothesis that nullify our goal, our what is called here our alternative hypothesis. So in this case, which were our goal? Our goal would say our bet. Our bet was that the community link will lead to more students using the functionality versus the original for the link. That was our hypothesis, our bet. We hope, we would like to know that the community link will lead to more engagement than the forum. So that was our bet, uh, our hypothesis. And this is statistically is called alternative hypothesis. So that is actually our goal, our real goal. From that, you have to do, to apply statistical tests, you have to do the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is similar to alternative hypothesis, but doesn't give preference to one element of the sentence or the other. It doesn't give preference to community or to forum. Just say, that there is no difference. So we are nullifying our hypothesis. We are saying that there is no difference in using community and using forum. So they are totally equivalent. And statistical tests, all statistical tests, try to disprove, to reject the null hypothesis. And if we are able to reject the null hypothesis, we can then accept the alternative hypothesis. And clearly we are going to, we, we add this alternative hypothesis because this number is also bigger than this. So we just already have a clue that probably community is bigger. So this also guide our alternative hypothesis. That also, also is our, our goal. Does this answer? Jacopo. Okay, last question uh, for, for you, if you remember, and if not, we are going to, to just repeat it for a moment. So if we choose the other 0 0.01, we are not going to reject the null hypothesis, right? Because if we choose, um, let me clear this stuff, these things here. So if we choose uh, one zero dot zero one, we need the numbers p values from here and to the end of the table. And clearly five is not here. 
here we have at least 6.6, .6, so we, we cannot. So if we pick 0 0.01, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. And the question for you is, if we cannot reject the null hypothesis, like in the case of the coins of the last lecture in December, what can we do? What can we say? Can we say that forum is better than community? Can we, we can say that um, the, there is no difference between community and forum. I, I read in the chat, we can say nothing. We can say that in, con in conclusive, we cannot express a preference. Um, any other opinion, either in agreement or not? The evidence we have been sufficient for rejecting it. Yes, it's three-way Dario, Luca, and Stefano to say more or less. I think we cannot say anything. We cannot say that yeah. there is no difference. We cannot say the forum is better. We cannot say the community is better. We cannot say we don't know. Honestly, we can say we don't know. It's inconclusive. The evidence that we have is insufficient for rejecting it, and so we don't know. Maybe community is better, maybe it's worse, maybe they are the same, we don't know. What can we do if we, for, for, to, to fix this problem, for instance? What can we try to do? To, so we have a null hypothesis that is not rejected and we, can, we cannot say anything, as you said correctly. So what can we do to, to prove our alternative hypothesis, to, to reject our null hypothesis? Ch change hypothesis or do more experiment while change hypothesis is so you you, are, you were tasked to to create more engagement on the on that forum so you cannot really maybe change your hypothesis because it was your work so uh, it's not always possible to change your hypothesis but yes do more experiment that's right or do the same experiment actually but maybe with numbers like this with more people with a bigger population, with a slightly different population, keeping track of differences clearly. So do more experiment or do a bigger experiment, a wider experiment, a longer experiment, etc. Could help in rejecting null hypothesis. Maybe not, because maybe actually you, you cannot reject the hypothesis. So you need to really change the hypothesis because community and forum really have no difference one on the other. So you, you will never have a preference on one or the other. So you need to do even one under experiment. You maybe always came not to rejecting the null hypothesis. And so you, you, don't, you cannot say, but you can probably at that point change the hypothesis. Say, okay, probably there is something wrong in community and forum. So let's focus on something different because here it's inconclusive. Hmm? So redo the experiment. So redo everything that we discussed today to just understand if there is this preference or is better in this way for the engagement, not better in general, but for the engagement, if it's better community or forum. Okay. These actually close uh, the courses, the course, the lectures of the course. We again have uh, one last lab that is supervised work group on Thursday and the exam simulation on Thursday immediately after the lab on the same Zoom link that uh, we are we were using now. Uh, we still have 10 minutes. Uh, if you have any other question about the exam, about the course, about life, about whatever, um, 
I can stop the, the recording and, and you can either turn on the microphone or write in the chat. If you don't have any other question, I will, see, I will be here for around 10 minutes again still, um, just to, to give you time to, to, to make question. But if you don't have question, you, we, we are going to meet virtually on Thursday.